It's 10 p.m. Do you know where your children are? In the Constitution, you can protest whenever and wherever you want. Let me Trans talk, Carol. Translate that for us. I actually don't understand the lack of journalistic curiosity and reporting on this. There you I'm asking you where thousand, the river is and you can't give an instant. I'm not afraid of the coronavirus. People are gonna die. It's just terrible, but like, inevitable? Ah! Let's go for a walk. Fear is a hand over a mouth. Fear is a trust fall with no one to catch you. Fear is you can't feed your family or pay your rent because your unemployment ran out and you have no prospects of jobs coming up on the horizon. Fear is a casting director telling you, be more like Tiffany Haddish or Kevin Harbra, because God forbid if a new black person comes to town having their own personality and identity, an audience doesn't know how to grasp that concept. 57.5% more likely to get the death penalty if you look black. Black skin, thick nose, broad lips, kinky hair. Fear is my daddy can't live with nobody. Fear is a white male friend. Fear is we need to have an all-female, 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 all-female identifying team, all-female improv team, or all-female writing team, or all-female <laughs> librarians. More female identifying words out of a female's mouth. Because of empowerment. <laughs> empowerment. 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 Empowerment, y'all. Because solidarity. Because of solidarity. Because fuck the patriarchy. And then ripping that female apart the minute she doesn't toe the line. Fear is being over 40 and having your life fall apart. You are 40 and your younger cousins and younger siblings have manifested the dreams of having a family that you held in your heart for so long before they were even born. Fear is the flag is more important than your body. Fear is my right to dictate your body is more important than your body. Fear is, but the babies the unborn babies need to be spoken for! <sighs> so I decided to go and get tested by a medical professional again. I was like, hey, oh, bro, what's going on with me? And told him my whole story. And he's like, sounds like you have generalized anxiety disorder and also PTSD. So yeah, I just had to go in and figure it out so I can label it. So if I can label it, if you can talk about it, then you can get in the way of it. I feel like a lot of people in my generation or even our parents' generation are like very hesitant, especially black. Oh, absolutely. Of the black persuasion. Absolutely, they're like, yo, figure that shit out. What are <laughs> right, you talking about? go yeah. to church. Exactly, go to the mosque, yeah. <laughs> right. Can't be at the mosque all day. Yeah, <laughs> which there's nothing wrong with seeking a spiritual guidance but it's also, like you said, if you don't know exactly what's going on with you, then how can you label it to correct it? You can go pray and it helps maybe. Mm -hmm. There's a spiritual connection you can have, cultural connection, but it's not all that we need, especially yeah. in a time where there's just so much information to constantly be processing, so much trauma just flying around. What were some things that were happening like in your everyday life with people that you were realizing like this is, not good. I am in severe psychological pain right now and I'm not telling people and then my job is to go and make jokes out of dark things so it's not even letting me really process anything and comedy is a coping mechanism and it's an art form but I feel like some people get into it through the coping mechanism and you got to decide whether you're going to make it a craft or you're going to make this how you're going to live your life. Were there things that your doctor um, or your medical professional told you to try or were there things that like you researched on your own or what have you done and, and what have you been doing 
to manage the anxiety on a day-to-day -day basis? It's weird because like, I think you know this, I have a degree in neuroscience, so therapy was hard for me because I was walking in there and I was like, I went to college for this shit. You ain't gonna get you me. Ain't, you ain't cracking me, my I nigga. I know this. <laughs> What's good? Then they're like, so why are you sad? I'm like, fuck, you broke me. <laughs> but like, uh, no. Um, therapy was helpful. First, like, talk therapy. Uh, group therapy was also helpful. Mm. Um, and uh, I think NYC Well is nice because even though you give your name, there's still, like, a degree of anonymity to it. And I think that just saying it out loud and having someone just immediately validate that you're going through something right now is very helpful and valuable. Thank you so much, yeah. Mamadou, for being candid, yeah. for being vulnerable. Yeah, man, peace unto you, man. Oh, yeah, you too. Can we, can we, yes, do this, do this, do this? Yeah, okay. What are we doing? We got it, yeah. Yes. <laughs> you are not alone. There are other people that are around here who will be able to help you. Find that person and don't be afraid to be vulnerable because People can't read minds. We can, and not everybody is good at reading physical emotions or just hearing the pain and hurt in your voice. You have to tell somebody. Otherwise, it just compounds and it builds. And then you might think that you've forgotten about it or you're over it. And then one day something triggers it and it comes right back. Fear is hearing your mother cough in the next room <coughs> and not knowing what to do about it. Fear is your life is just frozen. Fear is, fear is, fear is, yeah, we're doing it for the scaredy cats this time. That's right. Fear babies, get ready. So many things to be afraid of nowadays. Hmm. Coronavirus in your face, son. Police brutality. Trees. My sneakers, they're too tight. The Shell Shines production, you know what it is. Ooh. Got my boy Athos on the track. Uh -huh, I'm good, thanks. Yes. Featuring Precious Gorgeous. What up? He coming out for us. Right now. Not sure what I'm gonna say yet. About to talk to all the scaredy cats out there. Yo. I know you just saw Jesus and I know what you're thinking. This segment isn't about religion, okay? This segment is about how do we speak to the thing on the inside of us, right? The, the spirit. Everyone, whether you are doing it consciously or subconsciously, has something inside of them that is being pushed or pulled in a positive or negative direction. So, this is my show and I'm going to bring a positive element into this that can speak to fear. If you don't like it, kick rocks. When you hear the fear of God, generally speaking, it's a reverence for God. It's an honor for God uh, to, to a degree. Think about a healthy parent-child relationship, uh, you know, where you honor your parent. You fear them from a place of honor. And most people think fear God, like you said, trembling and shook. And well, there's a sense where he deserves that in a sense of trembling because he's all powerful. But that's not even the texture of relationship he desires to have with those who, who are his children. And mm -hmm. so it's really from that basis of a reverential, um, you know, fear, so to speak. I remember I, I came to service one day and there was a sermon specifically on fear. And he broke down fear into an acronym, uh, false evidence appearing real. So, which I was like, oh, that's amazing, like, <laughs> you know, sure. so clear, because a lot of times we do create scenarios, you know, in our mind, like, just by having, like, a, a tiny bit of information, and we just, like, spin it out of control, and then yeah. we end up being, like, fearful for that, you know, like, you know, racism is a prime example of that, in my, in my opinion, you know, it's like, you, you see somebody that's different than you, that's your little bit of information, and then you take it and you spin it out of control and say like, oh, this person is coming from my life, basically. Sure, sure. <laughs> you know? Um, but in terms of circumstances where the, the evidence isn't false, like sure. there's actual real concrete things to be afraid of, like, you know, 
everything that's happening right now in our world with with COVID and then also with you know racial injustice and you know abuse of um, LGBTQ individuals and people mm-hmm. in their business you know these are concrete things what do you um, you know how do you speak to that God gave us the gift of an imagination. The imagination in a healthy way should concoct vision. It should give us a a picture of a better tomorrow. We can imagine what it would be like to go, man, I'm no longer going to struggle with this issue. I I no longer want to live in this this side of the world. I want to live over here. Imagine what that would be like if I lived. So we have this gift of an imagination. Or when you get an idea for something, a creative idea, you can imagine it being done and how it would look. It's a gift. And so I think the perversion of that gift or the way you misuse that gift is when you false evidence appear on, when you take that gift and use it to think of the worst case possible scenario. Mm -hmm. And I think that's when that's qualified, like the worst possible scenario. So you just finished a job interview and you feel like it went terrible and all you're thinking is they're going to reject you. There's no way there. So now your imagination is not being utilized to say, man, I wonder if it work, works out. It's, it's mainly like, oh, they hated me. I was weird. I was awkward. I can't believe I picked my nose at that point, you know, whatever you did. And so you're thinking of the worst case scenario, but I think that's what he meant in that case. But fear, and let me just say, one of the unique things about Christianity is fear. Uh, we take evil as a very real thing. And some belief systems say evil is a concoction of the imagination or evil is just a a mind state. No, evil is very real. Mm -hmm. And so there are times where something is a real threat and, and, and it's not false evidence. Correct. I think in that case, what I just unpacked prior, we can use that. Mm -hmm. And, and, And then there are times where you see all that's going on. I'm personally passionate about social injustice and, and, you know, racial equality and, cross-cultural dynamics, but there are real fears. Sometimes there's healthy fear. Mm -hmm. I believe there's healthy fear. Fear, uh, if you're a kid and you're like, don't touch the stove because it's hot. Mm -hmm. That's a healthy fear. You get what I mean? Because you're going to hurt yourself. You're going to harm yourself. Unhealthy fear is when it's causing you to fret, be Mm -hmm. angst, when it's, when it's starting to be a, a speed bump or a hindrance to your destiny or calling. Those are unhealthy fears or a sense of being able to live life unapologetically unhealthy fear somebody trying to stop you because of the color of your skin from certain you know opportunities in life that's those are real Mm -hmm. and i think the the thing becomes is when you utilize it as a springboard Mm -hmm. to practice courage to practice there's some things i can't allow the fear to steal the ability for me to live in a sense of freedom. So just to close us out, we, you know, heard a lot of good things today, in my opinion. Uh, <laughs> would you mind sharing uh, three to five, like just practical things that someone can do to faith, uh, to face fear from a Christianity or, you know, from a faith perspective? Be confident in God, pray, hold on to some promises, get a solid group of community around you to help talk through some things. And lastly, just do it. Just go for it after you sift it through the many possibilities. Love it. Thank you so much for your time. Sure. Physically, what happens is our sympathetic nervous system gets excited and wants to protect us, wants to take care of us. Either we're going to fight or we're going to fly away. Um, And so the blood leaves our periphery and goes to our organs and gets us prepared. There's fear, but there's there's a level of intensity also. Mm-hmm. So I can feel a little afraid and that I'm gonna have one response versus like I'm I'm in the moment of terror. Mm-hmm. And that's a very different response. Mm-hmm. When we're having an intense feeling, we lose access to our prefrontal cortex. Mm-hmm. So we lose access to the part of ourselves that can be rational, that's making decisions that are like well thought out. Mm-hmm. When we're responding from a place of fear when we're having intense feelings, like we were sort of that rational part of our mind is not available. What are like some major categories, I guess, of uh, fears that generally most people have? Like, yeah, so um, this is an interesting question. Um, because, okay, first off, instinctually, everyone is born with the fear of falling Mm. and, um, oh shoot, it just went out of my mind. Oh, the fear of loud noises. 
Yeah. So, so those two are instinctual, all babies everywhere in the world. They're going to have that. And you're going to be able to see that in their behavior. Wow. Um, every other fear really is learned mm. um, or isn't innate. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's a result of our upbringing and our culture and, and what we, um, what we're exposed to. I think there's infinite numbers of fears, mm -hmm. but I think, you know, fear of a cohesive, of not having a cohesive sense of self, mm. which would be like fragmentation or annihilation. Um, fear of one's own aggression or of someone else's aggression, like bodily harm. Mm -hmm. um, and fear of, you know, not getting enough, not having what you need. Mm -hmm. um, fear of not being loved, of not loving. So obviously we're talking about fear and one of the biggest, uh, you know, cliches or phrases that people often think of when they hear, um, you know, fear is like, we have nothing to fear but fear itself. Mm -hmm. From a psychological point of view or from a scientific point of view, how much water does that <laughs> hold actually? I think it's complicated. I don't, I don't think that it is so much, um, you know, uh, yes, that holds or no, it doesn't. Sure. The quote says, let me assert my firm belief that the only thing we have to fear is fear itself, nameless, unreasoning, unjustified terror, which paralyzes needed efforts to convert retreat into advance. Right. Our national understanding of vigor has met with that understanding and support of the people themselves, which is essential to victory. So what that says to me is that this man has a secure attachment. This man is coming from a sense of privilege where he believes that all he has to do is be frank mm -hmm. and vigor, and he's going to be met with support to do what he wants to. So mm -hmm. for him, this is very true. So he is coming from this sense of privilege where um, it is only dealing with this, um, what did he say, uh, unjustified terror. So he's already setting it up like, it's what? I, there's nothing to fear. It's yeah. unjustified terror. We, we just need to, I just need to tell you what we need to do and then you're gonna support me and then we're gonna write this country. Then there's fears that are based on experience and there are situations where that experience is happening and it's scary mm -hmm. and we're in danger mm -hmm. or they're in danger and we need to address. Now, the, the, the part that I think that is important is we need to address this danger mm -hmm. with access to our mind. Mm -hmm. In terms of a practical standpoint for individuals who are experiencing fear or being put in a high anxiety situation, um, what are some practical things from like a scientific or, you know, a psychological perspective that people can try to apply to their situation? Yeah. When you're experiencing an, an intense response of any feeling, the first thing you want to do is regulate yourself, mm -hmm. decrease your sympathetic nervous system response and increase your parasympathetic nervous system response. So, um, depending on where you are when it's happening you're going to have access to different things but putting like if you're at home and you're starting to have a panic attack putting yourself you know one of the best things you could do is put your face in ice water um you know literally submerge your face in ice water there's something about that experience of holding your breath in cold water that engages the parasympathetic nervous system and like really calms you down. Paced breathing, you know, breathing deep and slow um, and exhaling um, at a slow count, you know, in for, out for, but like really low breaths. For me, as someone who also works occasionally as a teaching artist, it, it kind of makes me think that I wish that for a lot of other reasons, our health 
the way they teach health in, uh, you know, in school from pre-K all the way, you know, up to uh, 12th grade, like it would be beneficial probably to have that sort of training there in like health or end or phys ed. But unfortunately, we don't pay as much attention to our bodies in that way. And educationally, that, that's probably not a word, but in an education manner to like, you know, inform ourselves from a, you know, from a young age in particular. Really. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think you're right on. Like I think, and there's been studies um, around meditation um, being taught like to preschoolers and young kids and actually um, a lot of work with prisoners mm. and just showing like how, how productive it can be yeah. as far as the ability to regulate one's emotions. Well, thank you so much my pleasure your, your time Thank you for and, having me yeah um, i um, really appreciate your perspective i wanted to make sure that this was addressed in a responsible way so um yeah. i really appreciate your time thank yeah. you so much thanks for having me fear is my dad telling me to be careful be careful what just life in general dating dicks Fear is my mom telling me, are you sure you want to wear that shell? Fear is hiding. Fear is a writer struggling to write. trying just why not just get rich yeah another one another three <laughs>